guys, I'm Peter Curls. Welcome back to Feisty Ferret Business. This is Pia. Belfar is in the box. <laughs> I have a treat there for them. But today's video is actually going to be about basic ferret care tips and how to's. So this is just going to be very, like I said, very basic ferret care knowledge that, you know, is just useful for everyday life and taking care of them. So this will be talking about things like food, treats, nail clipping, baths, and enrichment. So first things first, let's go with nail clipping. So I would show you right now, but they are currently occupied. Well, actually, okay. I waited a little bit to do this so that I could actually trim my nails. But as you can see, they have fairly long nails. Sometimes they'll be longer than others. <laughs> um, Pierre's actually missing one on one toe from when he managed to rip it off by accident. So they have long nails and the inside of the nails is a little red line called a quill, um, which you know, that's some people call it different things, but that's why I've heard it from my vet. And you need to be very careful when you're, when you're cutting that nail so that you don't cut this red line. Usually, if you, nip, if you like nick it, it just causes a little bit of bleeding, maybe a little bit of discomfort, but nothing horrendous. <laughs> Nothing horrendous, but you still want to, you know, cause the least amount of discomfort because they usually don't like nail clipping and you don't want to cause much discomfort. So the trick to nail clipping is a little something called salmon oil, which comes in the form of this stuff. So, let me get up close. What you do is you put them on the back. I'm going to use bath because it's a bit more of a chill example. Just put a little bit on their tummy. And the hill just a little bit, just like above where the belly button is. And they'll usually do this. And this will keep them uh, distracted for quite a bit. So I'll go put them down while I go get my nail clippers. All right, so I use these. They are pretty basic, um, actually dog nail clippers. They have a sort of curved edge to them. And what you wanna do is pick up your fuzz butt. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more salmon oil on there just so that he stays distracted. And while we're doing it, sometimes they may still be a bit fidgety, but usually this is the best you're gonna get. While we're doing that, you just wanna sort of hold the toe and you wanna sort of clip an angle towards the end of the nail and just clip. Uh, you don't have to clip all of them if they don't all need clipping. Like sometimes they grow at different rates. You want to clip it, like I say, you want to clip it angle and you want to avoid the red line that's inside. I'm trying to figure out the best way to show you guys. <laughs> like I said, not all ferrets are this calm when getting your nails clipped. Oh, what the fuck is this? I'm sitting on them. But luckily for me, Balthazar is. So at an angle towards the end because that means that it grows back in a more normal way. Back legs are usually the easiest because they, they tend to just like stick them out. <laughs> Front ones tend to be, at least from my experience, the longer ones. And like I said, you want to clip that. Ah, don't steal the salmon oil pier. Your turn next. Yeah, that is. Also, by using salmon oil, you're showing them that this is not an <laughs> upsetting experience. It's not, you know, a bad thing. It's just nice and easy experience. Okay, and that is Balfi done. I'll do Pierre off screen because he's a bit more fishy, but that's a general gist of it. If they're being really, um, irritable then just use more salmon oil or you can distract them with other treats if they're not wanting to salmon oil but salmon oil usually does the trick and if you can get online you can get out some rescues there's plenty of places you can get them so thank you belfi for showing off for me uh yeah seriously do you want some salmon oil okay i'm gonna go get some salmon oil Again, just on the belly. If you have one of these ones, you can just squeeze it out. And just like that, you have 
a very chill ferret. All right, so that's nail clippings. Like I said, you can use these. Sometimes I see people using regular scissors, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we can use like human nail clippers, but you know, whatever works, works. Just make sure it's safe, of course. But so that's nail clipping. Uh, next up is enrichment. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> so enrichment, just any way to improve uh, your ferrets' lives, uh, make things more fun. Generally, this comes in the form of things like toys. Um, I have a basket of toys. This is not all of them, half of them are stashed. So general themes of toys that they will like are dangly toys, like this octopus from the undersea pack, link below. Um, anything that squeaks, or anything that crinkles or rattles, so the rattlefish in here somewhere. Or anything big enough for them to essentially tug of war with. Um, as well as like sort of crinkle toys like this. Anything goes really just make sure that you keep an eye on where the toys because even most even if you get toys that are safe for ferrets, it may contain part, you never know. So just keep whatever toys you do get keep an eye on them. Also things like cat scratches, which I actually just got a new one for my boys that they've been carrying out the so for at home. So yeah, cat scratches are good. Some people get like really, really big ones, which are usually pretty good. Quite a lot of it does give a lot of enrichment for these little dudes. Hey, I'm gonna build this. You gotta get out of the way. Gotta get out of the way. Don't know where I'm supposed to go. That's what I use in weight boxes. Uh, so, treats are ideally used for stuff like training, um, nip training, or. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, this is a conundrum. I have exploded the packet. <laughs> okay. Uh, one moment, I'm, I'm going to collect these up quickly. Alright, crisis averted. Wow. Um, yeah, so 100% meat product treats are the best way to go. Like I use an age variety, but there's plenty of brands out there that work just as well. Um, I use to use these to train, them, to train Pierre to get used to the harness to go for walks. So if that's something you're interested in doing, that's a good way to go about it. Litter training, um, nip training, or just, you know, 
get rid of it to get rid of it. But essentially, even though there's, there's nothing necessarily harmful about feeding these sort of 100% meat treats products every day, if they are 100% meats, it shouldn't be an issue, but like it's best to save them for you know occasions and stuff and for special reasons so that they you know are still considered a treat and not just anything else. But you guys don't like these, but everyone else seems to. I put these in my boxes and everyone loves them, but my boys don't seem to be interested. Um yeah, so that's treats. Um by uh, bars. So ferrets actually don't need bars. Um a lot of people have this misconception that because they smell so much they need to have baths quite regularly but actually the smell just comes from the oil of the skin and if you give them baths, especially with like shampoos and stuff, that will remove the oils from the skin which causes them to create more to make up for it which makes the smell worse. Um, so to, but, and also they groom themselves like cats and cats don't need baths really. So the best way to go about it is usually to give them bath once, maybe twice a year, you know, every six months or so, just, you know, to give them a good clean. And um, when you do, use oatmeal in the bath because that will help um, any skin irritation. That's how I bathe my hedgehog. <coughs> Oats are the way to go. But yeah, they do not need regular bath once a year, it's fine. And you know, it doesn't need to last long. And some ferrets love playing in the water, so you don't even need to use out oh, sort of shampoos, you can just put them in water and let them play. But for the most part, you don't need them unless they get especially grubby somehow. And when you do, it's best to use oats as well. Um, I think that's it for you guys. But I might continue recording and show you putting together my new mini cats. Scratcher thing they do because contact. All right, how does it work? Uh, all right, this is in the middle. Boys are very interested already. Like, they quite like this one if you can tell by it looks like it's falling apart. Yeah, if you have multiple ferrets, definitely invest, and you have the space, definitely invest in a nice big um, cat tree because it's not too big because obviously if they fall, they usually don't get damaged from falls, but you don't want to like risk that. But it's still a very nice, um, what should I call it? Enrichment for them. So, like one of those sort of medium ones. Oh no, I need a screw in just a second. Okay. I'm hoping I haven't just completely missed something else in this video that I wanted to talk about, but I don't think I have. Okay. I believe oh, that is the cat tree. So yeah, um, that was this video. Um, <laughs> if you have any other specific um, tips or advice that you would like to put in the comments, do that and I will showcase it at some point. Um, if you have any video requests, let me know in the comments. And if you want any specific video ideas, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.